Perhaps one of the most important yet misunderstood parts of any forklift training program is the engineering principles. Unless you have this knowledge, it's difficult to understand some of the safety rules relating to forklift operations and certainly detracts from your ability to make good judgments when lifting odd-sized and difficult loads. This program focuses on some basic principles, but they're a very necessary part of professional forklift training and operations. Let's begin with the lever principle, specifically the fulcrum principle. Simply stated, you have two weights balanced on a fulcrum, like a playground seesaw. On the forklift, one weight is the heavy rear end or counterweight. The fulcrum is your front tires, and the other weight is the load you're carrying. The counterweight balances the load with the front tires as the fulcrum point. The next point is the information contained on the data plate, which is generally located on the front panel of your forklift. This information is developed by the forklift manufacturer. The data plate gives you the make, model, and serial number of the equipment. It also states exactly how much weight can be safely lifted and generally states the lifting capacity in three different classifications, such as 24-inch load centers, 36-inch load centers, and 42-inch load centers. It also specifies how high the load can be lifted. Now, before we explain what all this means, let's explain this load center. The load center of a forklift is the distance measured from the center of the load to the vertical face of the forks. If you have a standard-sized pallet, it's 48 inches by 48 inches. If you have an evenly distributed load on this size pallet, you have a 24-inch load center. If you have an evenly distributed load on a longer-sized pallet, you no longer have a 24-inch load center. Let's go back to the data plate and those three different lifting capacities. One capacity is 5,000 pounds at a 24-inch load center that can be safely lifted to a height of 104 inches. Keep in mind, all safe lifting capacities are based upon the load center and the mast being raised in a vertical or straight position. If you tilt the mast forward when lifting, what are you doing to the load center? You're extending the load center and reducing your safe lifting capacity. When lifting anything, think about the load center of the load, the mast position, and the weight of the load. The manufacturer has given you some basic weights and safe lifting capacities. For example, a 36-inch load center may decrease your lifting capacity to 4,000 pounds, and a 42-inch load center may decrease your safe lifting capacity to 3,000 pounds. Another principle that affects your safe lifting capacity is the center of gravity. As you raise a load, the center of gravity shifts away from the truck and towards the forks. Forklift engineers are very aware of this. Therefore, they calculated this shift in determining the safe lifting capacities. When equipment operators exceed the safe lifting capacity and try to lift excessive loads, or if they have extended load centers and try to lift heavier loads, the center of gravity can be exceeded and the forklift will tip over towards the load. That's why tilting a load while raised can be a major safety hazard. Tilt loads only when safe to do so and necessary for positioning loads onto racks or other material handling equipment. When you tilt loads, you're changing the center of gravity, and this can be very hazardous to your safety if you exceed the maximum safe lifting capacity. Since forklifts do not have shock absorbers, engineers made forklifts on a three-point suspension system. The rear end is supported by a pivot pin in the center of the axle, which allows for the up and down movement of the rear tires when going over bumps and uneven surfaces. This pivot point and the front tires make up the three-point suspension system, and it's called the stability triangle. When the combined center of gravity of the truck and load move outside the lines of this stability triangle, the forklift will overturn. There are many situations in which this can occur. Fast, sharp turns can cause the center of gravity to shift outside the triangle, Lifting a heavy load and tilting the mast backward while moving, then running over a piece of wood or other uneven surface, can overturn the vehicle. 
You can see exactly why safety rules state that forklifts should never be driven with the load raised. A raised load can easily cause the stability triangle to be exceeded and create a condition where the forklift can overturn. Speeding and turning fast, sharp corners causes the vehicle center of gravity to shift outside the stability triangle as well. That certainly isn't all the engineering principles involved in forklift safety, but it gives you a better understanding of why safety rules should be obeyed to the letter. Poor judgment, forgetting to think about the weight of the load, the load center, and the truck center of gravity and stability triangle have caused many accidents and injuries. Being a professional forklift operator is more than just driving. It's being responsible, knowledgeable, and of course, applying these engineering principles every time you lift a load or operate your vehicle. Thank you. When used safely, forklifts save you time and make your job much easier. Anyone operating forklift equipment must be trained and authorized by the company. Once you're trained and authorized, the rest is up to you. You're expected to have the maturity and responsibility to operate this equipment efficiently and safely. This short program is designed to explain some basic safe operating rules to help you in your responsibilities. We certainly can't cover all the rules, so it's up to you to know and follow your company's forklift operating procedures. Let's begin with the most common hazard, and that's speeding on forklifts. Forklifts are designed to be operated at the speed of a person walking normally. You don't have speedometers on the equipment, but approximately five miles an hour is normal. You have to use your judgment on proper speed, because in some cases, such as when turning or near pedestrians, five miles an hour may be too fast. It's okay to work hard and not waste time, but when you're operating forklifts, safety is an important part of your responsibility. Next, riders. Absolutely no riders allowed on forklift equipment. That includes riding near the operator, on the rear, the sides, and certainly not on the forks or on a pallet placed on the forks. If you must elevate a person using a forklift, a proper platform must be used. The law requires the platform to be secured to the mast of the vehicle to keep it from falling or sliding off the forks. The platform must have adequate flooring for good footing and must have 42-inch high guard rails and mid rails. There must be a 7-foot high protective guard between the person on the platform and the mast to prevent a person's hands or other body parts from being crushed by the mast as it raises and lowers. When anyone is elevated on a platform, the forklift operator must remain at the controls, whether the motor is running or not. Driving forklifts with raised loads is unsafe, as the center of gravity of the forklift and load changes as you move. When traveling with a load, keep the load raised about four to six inches off the floor, which prevents the forks from hitting the floor. In this position, the forks and mast should be tilted back slightly to help stabilize the load. However, when you stop and are ready to elevate the load, move the mast back to vertical, or the straight position. It's hazardous to raise a load when the mast is tilted to the rear or forward. Of course, never allow anyone to walk under a raised load. Keep pedestrians away when you have a raised load. When raising a load, such as positioning the load into a rack or storage space, think about the overhead. Will the load hit a sprinkler pipe or other object? Broken doorways, lights, and other objects are a result of equipment operators not watching a raised load. The red light should go on any time you're raising a load. Well, while we're talking about maneuvering loads, if the load you're carrying is too high and blocks your vision, drive in reverse. Always look in the direction you're traveling. Many accidents have occurred because equipment operators weren't watching where they were going. In tight spaces, watch out for the rear end swing. The rear tires are your steering tires, and it's quite easy to bump into walls, doors, and people if you're not watching the rear end swing. Be particularly careful when maneuvering in congested or tight spaces. It goes without saying, but let's go ahead and mention it. Keep your arms, legs, head, and other body parts inside the running lines of the vehicle. 
This protects the operator from injury, especially when passing other forklifts and when maneuvering near storage racks and other materials. On loading docks, keep the forklifts away from the edge of loading docks. A slight miscalculation can become a nasty accident. Another good rule around loading docks is to always be sure trailer wheels are chocked, and if the trailer is disconnected from the truck, use a stabilizing jack to prevent the forklift from overturning the trailer. Dock plates provide a smooth surface over which to enter trucks and trailers. Make sure the dock plate is in good condition and is properly placed between the trailer and dock to prevent movement of the dock plate. You should have good lighting inside trailers and trucks so you can see what you're doing. On ramps, the forklift safety rule is very simple. Keep the load upgrade when going up or down a ramp. Drive up, back down is the best advice. Okay, everyone's driving at a safe speed, watching where they're going, paying attention to others in the area, exercising caution when loading or unloading trailers and trucks. Now, it's time to stop and park your vehicle. Basically, any time you stop and get off your vehicle, the forks must be on the floor and engage the parking brake. Now, that's a bare minimum. Forks on the floor and brake set. If you're going to be away from your vehicle more than 25 feet, shut off the motor. Naturally, try to keep the forks from becoming tripping hazards and don't block aisles or exit doors with your forklift or materials. Exit doors and electrical panels must remain unblocked at all times. All the things we've just talked about are nothing more than common sense and your good judgment. You're professionals with experience and knowledge. All you have to do is apply basic safety to your daily operations and work habits, and you'll be on your way to better efficiency, productivity, and safety. Thank you. As part of your professional forklift equipment operator's responsibilities, each operator must inspect and perform operator maintenance at the beginning and end of each shift. Make it a habit to check your vehicle every day, even if someone else has been using it. Let's begin with some basic maintenance procedures. If your forklift equipment is unsafe to operate, don't use it. A vehicle is unsafe when the horn doesn't work, brakes and parking brake are defective, or the steering has too much play to allow positive steering. If there are leaks in the fuel, oil, hydraulic, or transmission, it should be reported so it can be repaired. Almost all forklifts have some types of minor leaks, but they should be reported so a mechanic can inspect the leak to make a determination if the forklift is safe or unsafe. Follow your company's maintenance procedures and requirements, as there may be more defects that could render your forklift unsafe to operate. Of course, always check the water, fuel, oil, hydraulic, and transmission fluids before you begin operations. Check the level of the electrolyte in the batteries as well. On electric-powered forklifts, care and maintenance of the batteries is very important. Operating an electric forklift with insufficient electrolyte in the battery can cause damage to the battery. When testing the brakes on fuel-powered equipment, if they appear to be spongy or go too far toward the floor, report it to your supervisor. To test the parking brake, start the motor, engage the brake, put the transmission in a forward gear, and see if the brake holds. If not, it needs adjusting or repair. Test the steering. Excessive play in the steering wheel is when the steering wheel moves two to three inches before the rear tires begin to move. Next, inspect the heel of the forks for cracks or defects. This is where all the force and pressure of the load is exerted and cracks can lead to breakage of the forks. Raise your forks about three to four inches off the ground. Then inspect the mass chains to make sure they have equal tension. If one is loose, it could cause a load to shift and fall. Another good maintenance tip is to run the mast all the way up, then all the way down at the beginning of the shift. Quite often, the mast is not always elevated to the maximum height, and the hydraulic pistons and rubber parts may be dry of fluid, which can cause premature wear of these parts. Raising and lowering the mast will lubricate these areas. 
Of course, watch overhead to make sure the mast and forks won't damage or hit any overhead structure. When you're refueling, there are some important safety tips to follow. Whether it's charging electric-powered forklifts or fuel-powered forklifts, the motor should be off and no one allowed to smoke during refueling or battery charging operations. Small sparks can ignite LP gas and vapors of hydrogen gas from battery charging. LP gas, in addition to being flammable, is very cold, and proper protective equipment, such as gloves, face, and eye protection, should be worn. When charging batteries, be sure the charger is turned off before connecting the charging cables. Always make sure the water level is above the plates before charging, and leave the vent caps on during charging. Vent caps prevent excessive gassing during charging, reducing the chance of excessive hydrogen gas from escaping into the environment. Battery charging areas must have good ventilation, as batteries become quite hot during charging and allow gas to escape, creating flammable vapors. Batteries should be cooled before using. Again, follow your company's procedures when charging and handling batteries. There are many more items relating to vehicle maintenance that we haven't mentioned in this program, but it's important for you to use your good judgment and experience to determine the necessary operator maintenance required on your vehicle. Making sure the radiator coils are not clogged with dust or debris, keeping the vehicle clean, inspecting parts for cracks or other defects, Operator maintenance is your responsibility. If you believe your forklift to be unsafe, report it to your supervisor so it can be checked out. The most important part of any safety program is you, the professional forklift equipment operator. If you have a professional attitude, safety will be part of your job. Forklift equipment will provide many years of useful service, but they do need special care and attention from the operator. It may seem like a small price to pay, but operator maintenance is extremely critical to a good maintenance and safety program. Thank you.